started. I've done it. Burned, of course, and the stock destroyed. Half a dozen men of the cavalry patrol were standing on all night watch while their Indian scouts were being left behind. Shit. Oh, boy. Doc wanted to have a look at him anyway, so Major Evans and Chester and I went to the fire, mm. had a cup of coffee. Yeah. I don't know anything I'd rather have right now than this coffee. You ought to join the army, Chester. The army doesn't usually serve coffee all night, and I don't approve of this fire. Major, mm. look at Kabil over there. If he thought the Pawnees would be back, he'd have put the fire out himself. Mm, sound asleep. I suppose you're right, Marshal. After all, he's an Indian himself. He's a good scout, too. Yeah, I've known Kabil a long time. Yeah, he's rather undisciplined. What value, Boone? I bet he is. He's on both counts. Oh, my God. Ew. Oh, God. Well... <sighs> All the usual I think I'm ready. And a few new ones. Hopefully the volume's all right. Hopefully everything else is all good. Chester, hmm? uh, get Doc some coffee, will you? Oh, sure. Scalped, I suppose. For a start, Major. Worse than that? How that man lived as long as he did, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Bam. Savage devils. But I think the woman was unconscious during most of it. Uh, too much. To her, too much of an angle. Raised her head. How do you know, Doc? I would love oh, somebody coming in and being like, oh, I really like it. Uh. Oh, no. The groove across her head was too narrow for a rifle bullet, Matt. And I don't think those Pawnees had pistols. No, but they certainly had rifles. Oh, that reminds me. I dug a bullet out of a man, Matt. Yeah. Huh. Huh. That's funny. Did 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 This is a forty-four caliber. You don't see many of them anymore. Here, take a look, Major. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yes, I believe you're right. What do you make of it, Marshal? Major, I think I can find this gun smuggler. You do? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to borrow Tobiel over there to help me. My scout? What for? Well, those Pawnees have a day's start on us, but with Tobiel's help, I think I can catch up with them. Oh, no, no. no I'm afraid that'll bring out the whole tribe. Mm. No, I'll run this war party down myself as soon as their supply of arms is cut off. Well, they'll just be Tobiel and Chester and me, Major. It's the gun smuggler. I like they're getting the bored Indians. of the situation. Oh, like, they spot a troop of cavalry. She's so like, what's happening? get through the country without their knowing it if we have any luck at all. Uh, just... Uh, what do you have in mind, Marshal? I'll tell you later, if it works. Uh, well, I guess I can't stop you. No, you can't. And I'll go without Tobiel if I have to. Yes, you would. All right, Marshal, take him. Thanks. I just hope you know what you're doing. Major, does a man ever know? Plug up the yes. So plug it up this. My cellar phone. My cellar phone. My cellar phone. So we better breathe our horses mm. a little. I also Let's need to do. Here. I also need to do a 20 minute sketch as well. Right now, I wish I was an army. I'd feel a whole lot of 
I didn't stream last night because I didn't feel Why like we? it. Why we I literally body? was sick. I was I not feeling good now. at all. I was very much feeling well, I'll tell you. sick. First of all, that was a Just the weather and all, all that. that I don't know. The weather, the drastic weather change does not help. Rifle shoot 44. Yeah, that's right, Tobias. My, I ain't seen a 44 Henry since I can remember. No. Most of the buffalo hunters around here use a 45. Or if they use a Sharps or a Remington, that's a 50. What? You just don't see many 44s. Hold up, what? Army, they have all... Is that two people. messages in one? Yeah, but somebody's cornered a bunch of them Henry 44s. Yeah, that's two messages in one. Oh, okay. Is that what you figure? Yeah, that's He's right. very confused for a second. But whoever it is didn't think far enough ahead. Jayfish? Well, he sold his rifle. Nothing but a jayfish. Customers are going to have to come back to him for ammunition. Ah, uh, Hart. I can't get it anyplace else. And the market's all his. Hart made some art. Sounds to me like he's created a pretty good business. Hart makes art. Yeah, too good. Now those ponies will be... Pop on Hart. <sighs> and him alone. Marshal writes. Most Indians only need rifles. Deal ammunition all over. One place, other place. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> No find 44 bullets, no place. So they'll and go back to Then I can man. pull this up. They have to find him. And if we can keep on their trail, we'll move this enough, over here. Actually, find him too. 34 knee on war pack, all armed with good rifles. Maybe find us before we find them. Yeah. Hm. I guess it could work both ways. Well, nobody's going to find anybody. Here. All right, let's get moving. Yeah. What about this guy? She's trying to keep people interested in a conversation with her. We followed them for two days. And on the third, Tobiel informed us that the war party had been joined by another one of about equal strength. A band of Indians this large would protect itself with a ring of Scots. So we were forced to drop back and follow them more slowly. And then they turned to the east. And on the fourth day, we began to wonder if we were wrong about their trying to find the gun smuggler. Maybe they were just going to lose themselves in Oklahoma territory. All right. I also need... Hey, country marshal. Pony may be blow go. apart like There sand. we go. You mean they might separate and wait a while before raiding back into Kansas? Sometimes do. Oh, there it is. Mr. Dillon, look. Oh. Yonder comes a rider. What? White man. Cowboy. Yeah. He's riding pretty hard. Ride like man afraid. Yeah, let's wait here for him. Hope everybody's doing good. Oh my gosh, it's a it's an Omega L. How have you been? Raider Red, hey Raiders. It's not all done to It's all good. These things happen. That's a okay. Thank you for the raid, by the way, Simon. Uh, if people don't know. Simon's amazing. Hope everybody, uh, hope everybody's doing good. Forgot to, <laughs> that's the raid message right there. That, that's the perfect raid message. Hope the radio isn't too loud. Hope you guys enjoy yourselves. 
Maybe we'll see you when we get back. I'll be there. I'm trying to draw my own comic. So long. So long. Forgot to do the raid. <laughs> Uh, I draw my own stuff. I I draw. I, I try to do a lot of fantasy and stuff like that. Thank you, Simon, so much for the raid. I do appreciate it. It does help out. You're awesome, amazing. And if you need to go to bed, go to bed. If you are very tired, go to bed. Yeah, go to bed. Get some rest. Thank you for being awesome. Thank you for being amazing. All right, have a great one, Simon. <laughs> I'll try. Yeah, that's the wagon. But I only see one man there, yeah. so be one. one man. The levels are fine. <laughs> so Big far. Fire. A full white man fire. Just working on panels and pages for my comic. I was going to stream last night, and I did not feel like it. And everybody, if you just want to say hey and uh, skedaddle, it's a okay. Ojima, how you been, man? How's everything been, Ojima? I did not stream last night, so I'm streaming now. I felt bad for not streaming, so I am doing it now. Yeah, get some rest, Simon. I'm gonna walk up to that fire. Oh, Omega, and then so so and uh, Jimma. And no. Uh, and my friends out there will kill you. Ojima. Fuck friends. Uh, Put your gun away, mister. You haven't got a chance. Uh, Who are you anyway? What are you doing here? Put up your gun. <laughs> They'll say you might get nervous. How do I know anybody's out All right, then shoot. And you'll find out. Yeah. You must be crazy. There we go. I know people are probably lurking right now and just chilling out. Been good, been out of it, uh, if anything. I'm okay for now, I'm gonna draw as well. Hey, that's okay, man. Hey, I was out of it last night. I was not feeling up for stream, and I just... I, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to conk out. I don't care. And then when I woke up, I was like, you know what? I could sleep in for a, a few more hours. And then I was like, nah. Nah. You ask Marshall. Now, Marshall, all I got to do is shoot. I'll make you shoot. And then Pawnees will take care of the rest. So. I could have slept in. I know that. But you have to make this one if you want to live. Because I've decided I'd just as soon die right here than ten years. But it feels better not to. What about your partner? A partner? You know everything, don't you? I just about. I hope you're feeling better, though. Yeah, you know. I'm okay. Uh, my allergies are still killing me. Uh, but I'll just have to get over it. Them Indians is kind of mad about not finding 44 caliber bullets real handy. <laughs> Hope the radio is just fine for you guys. Tell me if it's too low or too high. I did. We found him where you met the Pawnees. He was dead. Dead? Yeah. You want me to tell you about it? Yeah, no, I'm real excited for... I'm real excited for Halloween because it feels like it's going to be a cold one. It's going to be a nice, chill Halloween. I will love every second of it. No, don't tell me. 
A nice, cool right. Halloween. Halloween. You start shooting, I'm not going to kill you and neither of my friends, but the Pawnees will come and they'll think you tried to fool them. They'll do worse things to you than they did to him. I couldn't go through that. We'll see what they do. All right, give me your gun. Come on, take it. I don't care what happens as long as they don't get me. All right. Now go get your horse, mister. And hurry. But, yeah. Uh, and none of us will get out of here. If you guys wanted, I could do that 20-minute sketch. It's up to you guys. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Lawrence Dobkin, Harry Bartell, Barney Phillips, and Jack Edwards. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring Thank law you and order so out much. of the I do appreciate that. of the West in Gunsmoke. All right. Thank you for coming in, Omega Al. If you need to leave, that's okay. It's all good. I was going to stream anyway. Yeah, thank you so much, Omega Al. Thank you for just coming in. Thank you for being awesome. And thank you for being you. I know you got stuff to do. Dean Kearney and Laura on the Lux Radio Theater this Monday night on most of these same stations. George Walt speaking. Radio's outstanding theater of thrills. Likewise, is likewise. Also heard Monday yeah. evening go get, go get stuff Radio done. It's all right. Thank you for being awesome and thank you for being a friend. time I saw Lena Wave, I should have resigned my job and gone to Texas on the fastest horse I could find. Handling a man is one thing, but uh, trying to handle a woman is another. Especially when she weighs some 200 pounds and is muscled like a mule and twice as ornery. Lena came to Dodge on a great draft horse with dark circles around its eyes. And she was leading an old jack mule that carried her boyfriend, Emmett Fitzgerald. And Emmett was a tired, pigeon-breasted little fellow with a green look in his face. They weren't a very handsome pair, but we were mightily impressed by him the day they rode up Front Street. I swear, Mr. Dillon, that woman must wear leather underwear. I don't know why she's leading this mule. The man doesn't look stout enough to run away if he wanted to. My, I'd sure hate to have her on my tail. Well, she's wearing a six-gun and built like a buffalo. Well, she sure isn't the gentlest-looking woman I ever saw. 
Oh, that poor little man, Mr. Dillon. He somehow gives me the feeling he's being carried around in a bird cage. Now, quiet, Chester. They'll hear you. Yes, sir. Oh, I never thought we'd make it, Lena. You mean you never thought you'd make it? Get off that mule. Sure, Lena. Here. I'll help you tie him up, Lena. Oh! You step on my foot! I'm sorry. Lena. That'll learn you to be a gentleman. <laughs> you up there. Stop that. Who are you laughing at? Why, nobody, ma'am. That's good. Because if I got the notion you was laughing at me or my man, I'd open you up. Oh, no. Oh, my, no. No, it, it, it was just something funny I heard the other day from a fella. What? What? What'd you hear that was so funny? Well... I, I, I was sitting there, and he come around. The and it ain't hard, mister. You remember, Mr. Dillon, you, you... Tell her. Please. Dillon? Why, you must be the marshal here. Oh, that's right, ma'am. Well, now, marshal, I'm proud to know you. My name's Lena Wave. Shake! Well, how do you do? Do. Over here, Emmett. Sure, Lena. Marshal, this here is Emmett Fitzgerald. Emmett? Glad to know you, Marshal. Emmett's a gambling man. Oh, is that so? I want you to know he's honest, Marshal. Ain't you, Emmett? Surely not. Say it. I'm honest. I only caught him cheating once, Marshal. Ain't that right, Emmett? I was in bed two weeks. He liked to kill me. Well, I'm glad to know that, uh... Uh, about your being honest, I mean. Emmett will be running a game tonight. Right over there is as good a place as any. The Texas Trail. Uh, sure, sure. Glad to have you sit in, Marshal. And you can come, too, yeah. if you watch your manners. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Emmett, I'd better feed you so you can get enough strength back to kneel them cards. Come on. Sure, Lena. Chester's been in that game over there for two hours, Matt. He must be losing. Well, he usually does, Kitty. Oh, anybody could concentrate with Lena hulking around. I don't know. <laughs> she does keep an eye on things, doesn't she? You know, Matt, I feel kind of sorry for her. Oh, she can take care of herself. Oh, isn't that? Being so big and not very pretty. After all, she is a woman. Uh, that's not too easy to tell, Kitty. You think she's in love with Emmett? Well, now, Kitty, I tell you, I haven't worked that out yet. Uh, I, I'm sure been studying on it, oh, though. Oh, man. <laughs> Every woman needs a man of some kind. Well, she's got one. Yeah. I feel sorry for him, too. Oh, Lena will take care of him. I know. But I'll bet he'd like to take care of Lena just once. After all, he's human. I tell you, that is not my hand. I had three aces. You accuse him of cheating, and I'll shoot you dead. Oh, excuse me, Kitty. I better go fish Chester out of that. Emmett was dealing, wasn't he? I'll blow a hole in you, mister. Right now. All right, hold it, Lena. She's about to shoot me, Mr. Dillon. You bet I am. Lena, I don't know what it's like where you came from, but you shoot anybody around here and you're going to go to jail. You'd put a woman in jail? For shooting, I would. For fighting? What? This is what. Well, now, here, he, he, he can put me in jail for that, too, now. Now, here. This <laughs> The game's closed, gentlemen, for half an hour. I need some beer, Emmett. Come on. Sure, Lena. Oh, I don't care what they say. Yeah, you know, for me like that, it ain't 
ain't fair. Uh, here, no, man. Chester, oh. let me help you out. Oh, come on. There. Well, are you all right? Why didn't you stop her, Mr. Dillon? She might have killed me. Well, I, I I, don't know, Chester. I never fought with a woman. Well, I have, and I don't want no more of it. Well, you can't hit her. What can you do with her? Leave her alone. That's what I'm going to do. You know, Chester, Lena could get to be quite a problem. So she ain't going to be my problem. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> breakfast? Oh, no, I've already eaten. We'll have some coffee, though. Oh, good. They had me up real early this morning. No? Who did? A couple of men, Lena Wave, got mad at. Huh? She used a bottle on them. Oh, were they hurt bad? Oh, she bloodied them up some. It wasn't real serious, though. All they did was try to protect themselves. After all, what man's gonna fight a woman? Yeah, that's true. One of these days, some drunk's not going to realize she is a woman, and he'll shoot her. Hmm. You wonder if it hasn't happened already? <clears throat> oh, say, I hear Chester caught it all right when he accused Emma of trying to cheat him. <laughs> <laughs> well, he found out later that it wasn't true, Doc. Yeah. The other boys were just playing a joke on him. They switched his cards while he, he was under the table looking for some chips that he dropped. Oh, wonder all oh, that. Oh, if you ask me, a man that'll leave his hand while he crawls around on the floor... Deserves anything that happens to him. Well, just about everything did. Mr. Dillon? Oh, here he is. Uh, He'll uh, tell you. Uh, Mr. Dillon? Oh, say, you better come too, Doc. Huh? Uh, well, what's the trouble, Chester? Lean a wave. She just shot a man over at the Dodge House. Huh? What? Oh, well, say, we better get... oh. Mm. Is the man dead, Chester? He sure he is, Doc. Where's Lena? She's still there. Claims it was self defense. Did you see it? Mm, yes, sir. I was right there. Lena was getting her room key at the desk, and this buffalo hunter come in and grabbed her. Well, he was pretty drunk. Uh, drunk? At this hour of the morning, he was drunk? Well, I guess he'd been up all night, Doc. Anyhow, he tried to kiss her. He must have been drunk. He got her gun hand behind her back, and then he pushed her up again in the desk. Oh, she was swearing at him something terrible. Well, how did she shoot him, Chester? Yeah. Well, sir, she just pooched around and squirmed herself along the desk so she'd rubbed her six gun around on the other side. Then she just pulled it out with her free hand and shot him in the belly. She did? Oh, oh my, she's quite a woman, ain't she? She sure is. She's waiting with Emmett right inside here, Mr. Dillon. Everybody else took cover. They're scared to death of her. What are you here for, Doc? Eh? You can't do him no good. Eh, well, I, I, I just come to take a look at him. Oh, yes, he looks dead on. He's dead. Why did you kill him, Lena? Well, I had to protect myself, Marshal. Nobody else would, including Emmett here. I... I figured you'd take care of him yourself, Lena. You always do. Sure. But if you was a man, you'd do it for me. Oh, now, Lena, look how big he is. He ain't very big anymore. All it takes is a gun, Emmett. There are too many people carrying guns around here already. I'm going to take yours, Lena. What for? I killed him in self-defense. He wasn't even armed. Except for that Bowie knife. You're forgetting something, Marshal. What? I'm a woman. So? So? You mean to tell me a woman ain't got the right to protect her virtue in this town? What do you men come to, anyway? Well, by all, oh, by all, oh, yes, you've got a point there, uh, Ain't no judge in the world that wouldn't call it self-defense. No, you're right, yeah. Lena. I keep forgetting. You know I'm right. Emmett, we ain't had breakfast yet, and I'm hungry. Come on. Sure, Lena. Oh, my gosh. So many people streaming right now. I've been thinking, Mr. Dillon. Oh, what about, Chester? Well, old Lena could have let that fella kiss her this morning, just a little peck anyway, and she wouldn't have had to shoot him. Yeah, she could have, but she didn't. 
I declare. She's enough to curdle cream. Well, I hope everybody leaves her alone from now on. Marshal Dillon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm Nate Bannister. Well, I'm glad to know you. You won't be, if what I hear is true. Oh? Uh-huh. Jim Henry was my friend, Marshal. Is that so? Nobody's going to shoot a friend of mine and get by with it. Not even a woman. He was drunk, Nate. And he was treating her bad. And it's no call to kill him. In this country, a woman's free to protect herself any way she can. Yeah. That's what everybody I've talked to says. Well, don't sit with me. You're going to arrest her? Uh. No. Okay, then. Now, wait a minute. What? Where are you going? I'm Marshal. I'm going to kill me a woman. <laughs> Turn for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, this Monday night on CBS Radio's Suspense, hear Jeff Chandler in Death at Strikerood Pond. It's an exciting trial in which a young man faces death because of his decisions made as a member of a World War II underground. It's a fascinating study in suspense, and it's yours to hear this Monday night over most of these same stations at the Star's Address. Monday, Suspense. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. Nate Bannister was obviously a buffalo hunter, same as his friend who had been shot that morning. He was a huge man with a heavy black beard and eyebrows so thick it was hard to tell if he was looking at you or not. I watched him as he stood in the doorway having just I'm said really that he excited, was going to kill it? Lena Wave. And I realized that a man that primitive was capable of doing anything, even shooting a woman. And I wasn't sure how to stop it unless I shot him first. The way I was brought up, Marshal, that's what friends is for. If somebody kill you, then they got to kill them. You do any killing around here, Nate, and you'll be tried for it. Maybe. If you catch me. I'll catch you. Why you got to protect women, Marshal? Just because they're so weak and puny? Is that Nate Bannister? Huh? You heard me. Why? Yes, ma'am. I'm Nate Bannister. Well, they didn't tell me you were so big. Who didn't tell you? How'd you know my name? You've been spreading it around that if the marshal don't arrest me, you'll shoot me. That's true. Are you leaning away? I am. And if there's going to be any shooting, I want in on it. Now, wait a minute, Lena. I ain't going to get bushwhacked by no dirty buffalo hunter, Marshal. Bushwhacked? I wouldn't do that to nobody. Especially the uh, lady. Lady? Yes, ma'am. He called me a lady, Marshal. Well, you are, ain't of course I am. Yeah, what's the matter with calling you one? Nothing. I kind of like it. Just because you ain't pale and skinny like ordinary women. No. Of course I am. <laughs> Why, I, I never seen a woman like you. Nowhere. You're kind of admirable. <laughs> Listen to him, Marshal. 
Ain't he a one? Oh, I mean it. I sure do. Oh. I sure do. No, you don't. I'm too big. Too big? Why, you want to be like all them little scrawny women? They can't do nothing. They're no good. They ain't. Oh, no. A real man needs someone, uh, uh, uh better than that. He does? Of course he does. Like me? Yeah. Like you. <laughs> what, 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 what. You were going to shoot me a minute ago. Oh, no. I didn't mean nothing by that. Hey, come on. I'll buy you beer. We'll talk about it. Well, okay. Go on, Marshal. Yeah. Don't you worry about nothing, Marshal. That jug of corn whiskey's still out back. Yes, it was last time I looked. Go and get it. Those two make quite a couple, Matt. Look at them. They've been sitting there most all day. Yeah, a pretty shaggy pair of lovebirds, if you ask me. How's Emmett taking all this? Well, he didn't find him till a couple of hours ago. No? What happened? Who oh, where is he? Nate ran him off. He probably had done more, but Lena wouldn't let him. You know, Matt, I think underneath she's real fond of that little Emmett. Yeah? <laughs> and she's got a strange way of showing it. Women do sometimes. Well, it doesn't matter as long as she keeps out of trouble. She leads quite a life, doesn't she? Shoots the man in the morning and falls for his best friend in the afternoon. <laughs> she might have shot both of them if Nate hadn't started sweet-talking her. Well, he made her feel like a woman, that's what. Oh, sure. Nothing wrong with that, is there? Yeah, it probably saved his life. All right, mister. Now you get away from What's her. What's mad? It's Emmett. Yeah. You heard me. I thought you'd gone home. I ain't gone home. Not without Lena, I ain't. <laughs> yes, you are. Lena and me are going to get married. I didn't say that. I ain't had time to tell you. I'm... I'm warning you, mister. <laughs> Excuse me, Kitty. Yeah. I better stop this. <laughs> Look, fella. I'm hmm. going to kiss her. Watch. No. Hold it, Emmett. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, Emmett. Give me that derringer. Sure, Marshal. Chester. Yes, sir. Here I am, Mr. Dillon. Get Nate's gun before he comes to. All right, sir. I'll get it. All right, then take him over to Doc, huh? Doesn't look too bad, hurt. No, sir. He ain't. I'll take care of him. Em. You shot him. I know. You shot him. Over me. Well, he was stealing you, Lena. And you went and shot him. I was kind of ashamed this morning when that other fella tried to kiss you. You're a man after all, Emmett. Baby boy, what are I you doing? Standing up pretty? Oh, I didn't care nothing about him. You didn't? No. I was just tired of not being treated like a woman. He called me a lady and kind of lost my head. That's all. Well, Emmett kind of lost his head, too, you know. All right, Emmett. Come on. They're going to jail. No, Marshal, please. Come on. Get going, Emmett. All right. My husband goes to jail. So do I. But your husband? Of course. We've been married ten years, Marshal. I always knew it wasn't a mistake. Well, he's still going to jail. Please, Marshal, don't take him. Of course I'll take him. He just shot a man, didn't he? He was only protecting his lawful wedded wife. You gotta let me go. Put the rabbit. Him now. 
He's just a baby bunny. Look, Lena, there's been nothing but trouble since you hit Dodge. Please, Marshal. When Nate gets patched up, he'll be gunning for Emmett here. Emmett will kill him next time. All right, all right, Lena. Look, I'll tell you what I'll do. Get out of Dodge, both of you. Right now. You mean it? If you hurry. Oh, thank you, Marshal. Hey, let's go, Emmett. Wait a minute. What? Take my arm. All right. Now, Lena. Come on. Sure, Emmett. Sure. Smoke under the direction of Norman McDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Virginia Gregg with Vic Perrin and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in gun smoke. Mr. and Mrs. Norris of CBS Radio get into an arty crowd, an artful crowd, too, when mixed paints and mixed emotions make murder. Here are collector's items, <laughs> Ham and Jerry's latest thriller, leading them a merry chase <sighs> in works of art before they nab their killer. It's on most of these same stations Tuesday night. On the same evening, you have a date for thrills with John Lund as yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Don't forget. George Walsh speaking. Eve Arden, as our Miss Brooks, teaches you how to laugh Sundays on the CBS Radio Network. Everything been as every little thing. Hope everything's been going good for you, Mass. It's going pretty good. It's going all right. I'm just on page 16 and just working on sketches, just trying to get everything together. What about you? How's your day going? Hopefully not too bad. Just working on my stuff. Hey. I like a vibing. It's good to vibe. You know, sometimes vibing is good. I'm always riding. Miss, ever since we met on the trail back there this afternoon, you've been watching me. We're strangers, ain't we? Sure. You, you know me. me always vibing. First, but I trust you now. Crawl back in your blanket. Okay. Well, that's better. Go to sleep. 
sleep, will you? <laughs> you going to sleep? I'd like to watch the stars a little while first. Ain't no stars for me. I can see them over your shoulder there. Laying on my back gives me the ache. Gives me the ache, too. We've got a lot in common, mister. Yeah? You never told me what name you go by. You never told me neither. I'm gone if you ain't the most suspicious man I ever run into. I'm still alive. Thought to quit worrying so much you get old before yeah. your time. He's got your a nice Chelsea puffy coat on. Worrying. Who's your pa? He's dead. It's okay with you, a puffy coat. Died worrying from me. No. No, he died of the milk sickness. He's a good man, though. Ain't any good man. He was. Why? What he believed in. What did he believe in? Well, he always said he believed in foot washing, saving your seed potatoes, and paying your honest debt. Your pa was crazy. But I'm glad you've been vibing. I'm glad you've been chilling out. I'm glad you came in even for a minute, man. Thank you for being awesome, and thank you for being incredible. I keep saying awesome and sweet because I I lit it because I'm a I'm not that smart. I'm not that smart. That's that's about a it. I say it because I I repeat myself way too much. It beats me how you can't know think of any way other way adjectives. Yeah, but all the fella said was he'd found a man's body some 20 miles east of Dodge. You've been riding like you knew right where it was late. Uh, well, he was a teamster, Chester. I'd just been following his wagon track. Uh, I mean, I try to be... Uh, I don't know, Mr. Dillon. No, I Maybe can't I even remember any any big good Dodge. words that express to you how I feel about my friend. Yeah. Except your... That must be it, all right. You're stupendous. You are. You are always there for a friend and all that. Well, look at there. He's still in his blanket. Yeah. I feel like I'm a I'm a bad AI sometimes. With stuff like that. At least the poor fella died in his sleep. Well, he must have come half awake. His hands on his gun. He never got it out, though. Somebody sure jumped him fast. Say, maybe it was Indian. No. Now his hair's still on. Now, besides, somebody was sleeping over here. But brave man. No, sir, he sure couldn't. No boy, 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 boy. Howard. Go get that shovel off your saddle, huh, Chester? Yes, sir. Hmm. Not really exciting, is it? It's all good. It's a okay. Just chilling out here and enjoying drawing and stuff like that. Drink it. When I want it, I don't believe you do. Drink some now. I ain't bothering you. And a man come in here and have what he wants? Cowboy, ain't you? What's wrong with being a cowboy? Nothing. 
Only I always thought it took a man to be a cowboy. You trying to start trouble, mister? I listened to you. <laughs> What's so funny about that? I killed a man once for telling me not to laugh. Well, I ain't telling you nothing. Mister, I think you're a coward. You got a gun in your belt. Go ahead, use it. What for? So she can kill me and call it self-defense? All right, that's enough. Leave him alone. What are you mixing in this for? I don't like gunfighting around here. You don't like it. I'm a U.S. Marshal. And also... Now, what's your I name, remember Stranger? all this. I'm called oh, Kriegel. All right, Kriegel, move down the bar. It's also something people have a problem Wild with move. is uh, footwear. When you're drawing, you, you got to watch out for your footwear. I wouldn't have dared draw on him, Marshal. If I ain't no gunman, he'd have killed me, sure. Yeah, he probably would have. My name's Jesse Hill, Marshal. Well, he would be all the way down here. I'm proud to know you. Well, Jesse, you keep that gun in your belt, huh? And stay away from Kriegel? I ain't no troublemaker. Yeah, I know. But sometimes a man can't avoid it. Not around somebody like him. Like this. <laughs> well, I think I'll do my drinking across the street. See you later, Jesse. Yeah. And her pointy, pointy finger would still be pointing at him, even with that extreme of an angle. Wonder where he came from. Her little pointy finger. I never saw him around here before. He's new and Chester. Let me tell you something. It had to be that kind of a man who killed that cowboy we buried today. Well, you think it was him? Well, he could have done it. He's enough of a coward. But if he did, no one could ever prove it. Yeah. No, sir, I guess not. But he'll make a mistake yet, Chester. His kind always do. But you're right, Miss. I shouldn't put myself down. I'd like to make a dress of it. I should be you kind to myself. To I'm afraid so. But I'll order more if you want it. How long will it take? Uh, a few weeks is all. Okay. I'll need about uh, seven yards. You'll have it, Kitty. Pretty surprised so many people are streaming right now. These new parasols. Oh. They just come on the Santa Fe today. From St. Louis. Oh, Matt. Your coat's out back, Mark. Go try it on if you want. New coat, huh? I'd like to see it, Matt. Well, you wait here, Kitty, and I'll just go put it on. Sure hope it fits. I had a parcel of trouble talking him into ordering that coat. Well, he's needed it ever since I've known him. Men just don't like new things, Kitty. Yeah. Now, is there uh, anything else? Ah, uh, no. That's all for today. How much do I owe you? Hmm. Yeah, let's see here. Uh, uh, I'll have to add it up. Well, now, there's a right pretty girl. Go on back to your hogs, mister. <laughs> Salty, too. I like that. Oh, now, now, look here, stranger. I don't pay any attention to him, Mr. Jones. You got it figured? Well, it comes to uh, about uh, two dollars and forty cents, kid. Uh -huh. I'll pay it. What? I says I'll pay it. You'll do nothing of the kind. Put it on my bill, Mister. Oh, Jones. there you are. I like to buy things for pretty girls, providing they let me carry the package home for them. <coughs> now get out of here and leave me alone, or I'll hit you again. Maybe you're a little too salty. Maybe what you need is a. Ch Go ahead, Krigo. Finish what you were going to say. No business of yours. I want to hear what you were going to say. She slapped me. You saw Get her. Get out of the way, Kitty. Gladly. No, let's not fight. Be quiet, way, Mr. Jonas. Yes, sir. Grigo, I think you're a coward. I'm going to prove it. What are you up to? 
That cowboy Jesse wouldn't draw on you. <sighs> but I will. Are you ready? No. <laughs> yeah. There, I got my gun out and you didn't do a thing, did you? I ain't drawing on you. <laughs> All right, now get out of here, Krigo. And if I ever see you anywhere near Miss Kitty again, I'm gonna break your neck. Now go on, get out. He sure showed his colors, Matt. Yeah. You know, I think that's the first time I ever saw you draw first on a man. Well, I figured he wouldn't draw, Kitty. How'd you know? A Krigo doesn't take any chances. And right now, I'm wondering how many more men he's going to kill before he's through. <sighs> we will return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first... The crusade for freedom is a crusade for your freedom and mine. The truth dollar people send the crusade for freedom help preserve our own freedom, even as they get the truth and hope to people behind the Iron Curtain. Truth dollars help finance Radio Free Europe and Radio Free Asia, the most effective weapons Western democracy has for countering lies and distortion. Send your contribution to the crusade for freedom, care of your local postmaster. That's crusade for freedom, care of your local postmaster. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. He's been that way ever since he got here. Been so sad and stuff. right there, Mr. Dillon. Krigo agged him into drawing first. Yeah. Self-defense again, is that it? Yes. The poor fellow was awful slow. And you know what Krigo did? <laughs> what? Well, he shot him in the gun arm first, then through both <laughs> of And finally he shot him in the belly and killed him. There's nothing I could do once they'd started. Yeah. Who was he, Chester? A fellow named Lydacker that told me. Some stranger. Huh. Why don't you run Krigo out of town? Ah, uh, running him out of Dodge would just mean he'd go murder somebody someplace else, Chester. Well, at least he wouldn't be doing it here. Yeah, I know. But somehow I... I'd feel responsible for letting him get away. Yeah. Varmints like that oughtn't be allowed to live. Well, he wouldn't be alive if he wasn't so careful about picking the man he shoots. No, sir. Oh, say, Doc was down a little while ago. Oh. Uh. He's through with autopsy and wants to know who's going to bury that fellow. Yeah. Uh, did he have any friends? Yes, sir. That cowboy Chico <sighs> tried to fight Jesse Hill. Oh. I think he was a friend of his. He helped carry him up to docks anyway and seemed real mad about it all. Quiet, you know, but mad. Could lead to trouble. How do you mean? Well, Jesse backed off from Krigo once, but uh, he might go looking for him now. I don't think he'd have a chance. Then we'd sure better find him, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, Chester, we better. Come on. Jesse left town, Mr. Dillon. Well, I hope so. Though we haven't looked every place yet. Somebody said he had a room at the Dodge house. Oh? That seems to be pretty fancy. <sighs> for a writer, doesn't it? 
me he probably spent six months' pay in the last few days. They always do. Well, they can't spend it out on a prairie, Chester. I guess it doesn't mean much to them. Yeah, no, but you'd think they'd save a little money, a few dollars at least. Oh. Uh, tell me something, Chester. Hmm? Why were you at the bank last? Well, I keep my money in my sock, Mr. Dillon. It's safer. Oh, oh, maybe, yeah. Isn't that kind of tough on the merchants when you go to spend it, though? Well, nobody ain't turned it down yet. Money's money. Wait a minute. There's Jesse across the plaza there. Yeah, that's Krigo he's talking to. Come on. Hey, it looks like they're having an argument, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. You gonna stop it? Well, if I can. Krigo! Jesse! They're about to fight, Mr. Dillon. Murdered him, Krigo. Long draw. Hold it, Jesse! All right, Krigo. Put your gun away. Sure. He tried to shoot me, Marshal. You saw him. He's dead, Mr. Dillon. Well, that was pretty easy for you, wasn't it, Krigo? He shouldn't have tried it, Marshal. I told him not to. You're lying. I heard what you told him. Well, what difference does it make? He drew first. I shot him in self-defense. Yeah, sure. Grigo, did you know that man you killed the other night was Jesse Hill's friend? Jesse was telling me that just now. Well, I got an idea. You talked him into drawing just to work Jesse up to a fight. They was both a couple of bums, Marshal. How about that man on the prairie? Was he a bum? What man? The one that was lying wrapped in his blanket. I don't know what you're talking about, Marshal. Krigo, how long you been killing people? Marshal, I killed my first man when I was 18. Fellow tried to knife me, so I shot him. I'll tell you something else. I ain't wanted by the law nowhere, nowhere at all. Did you ever fight a man who could handle a gun? What do you mean? You will someday, Krigo. You'll make a mistake and pick on the wrong man. Will I, Marshal? Oh, I'm going to go and get me a drink. Ain't there nothing you can do about him, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, there's one thing I can do, Chester. At first, we'll get Jesse... And I am hungry. Duff. We'll probably be streaming for two hours. So I got one more hour of hungry uh, of hungry drawings. Still standing at the bar of the Alpha Ganga, Mr. Dillon. All right, Chester. You gonna take him in? He t no. he does seem morose. I have to turn him loose sooner or later. Well, what are you gonna do? What about this Something guy? I've never done before, Chester. What about this guy? Well, if it works, it'll save some lives. Oh. Uh, you'll see. Oh, the bar? Oh, the musician? Yeah, he's been like that since he got here. He's been a sad sack, sack of shit this whole fucking time. Just a sad, sad pile of garbage. Is there anything you want me to do, Mr. Dillon? Yes, there is, Chester. What? Well, you'll know when the time comes. Hope everybody's having fun. But stay out Hope of everybody's enjoying themselves. Hope everybody's chilling out and enjoying themselves. And if you're not, that's okay. That's all right. Let's say okay. I'm not going to be bothered by that. You're not fit to live. You got no call, Marshal. I killed them men in self-defense. Sure. Ain't no court in the world. I'm not talking about hanging you. 
What are you talking about? Krigo, I'm gonna walk out of here and wait for you in the street. And I'm gonna wait one minute. And if you're not there in one minute, I'm coming back. What for? I'm gonna kill you. No. No, I ain't gonna fight, Chief. Yes, you are. One minute, Krigo. killed him. Yeah. He had his gun out. He, he'd have shot you right in the back. Thanks for letting me know, Chester. Oh, oh my goodness. Is that what you wanted me to do? Yeah. That was it. Well, suppose I hadn't saw him. Well, then Krigo would have killed another man. I feel kind of sick. You did fine, Chester. Now remember, Chester, it was more than one life you just saved. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Vic Perrin, Howard Culver, and Richard Deacon. Parley Bear is Chester, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in gun smoke. on most of these stations, observing the end of Amos and Andy's 26th year of entertaining America, Jack Benny, Bing Crosby, Edward R. Murrow, and Lowell Thomas join a distinguished cast in tribute to Freeman Gosden and Charles Correll, the men who are Amos and Andy. Tomorrow evening on CBS Radio, don't miss this star-studded Amos and Andy anniversary show. George Wolf speaking. For mystery mixed with merriment, join Mr. and Mrs. North Tuesday evenings on the CBS Radio Network. Just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke, starring William Conrad. Story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal.
see you. You'll get shot someday walking around her days like that. You'll get sunstroke sitting out here in the heat and the dust. I don't see people in the daylight very often. I wanted to find out if they're any different. <laughs> Sit down. Uh, well, are they? Any different? No. I don't know. But I've spotted a few I think might be sober. <laughs> That's different. Uh, for you, maybe. You know, I was just thinking, Kitty. There's hardly a man comes to Dodge that isn't looking for trouble of some kind. They call it fun. Yeah, sure. But part of their fun's beating somebody up or shooting him. I've heard of places where the men have to check their guns when they come to town. Ah, oh, that never works. You can always hide a gun. Or a knife. You ought to go fishing, Matt. What? Have some fun yourself. Quit worrying for a while. Oh, I'm not worried, Kitty. You know, if it wasn't for all these men stalking each other, I'd be out of a job. There are other jobs besides keeping the peace, Matt. Yeah, I've tried most of them in my time. Hey, Mr. Dillon. Oh, hello, Miss Kitty. Hello, Chester. Uh, Doc sent me to find you. There's an old man up in his office. Oh, what does he want me for? The old man's been shot. Shot? Yes, sir. Claims somebody tried to kill him. You mean he was ambushed? I guess he was. Anyway, it hit him in the neck. <clears throat> All right, Chester. I'll go back with you. He's got a friend with him. But they're both strangers around here. Now, you see what I mean, Kitty? Young or old, they're all looking for trouble. Maybe it'd help if we burned this place down. I'll sit here and think. See you about it later, Matt. Where's the dock? Somebody come for him. Oh, what do you mean? Somebody come for him. That's what. Said somebody else was sick. You're the man that was shot, huh? We don't need you, Marshal. We'll handle this. What's your name, mister? Peavy. John Peavy. My partner's name's Rives. Milligan Rives, Marshal. You ain't never heard of us. Where are you from? Up north. The sod busters don't usually wear six guns. What are you doing in Dodge? We quit the land, Marshal. We're going to enjoy ourselves for change. We ain't never going back. Oh, hmm. well, you're a little old to be making a move like that, aren't you? I ain't hardly 60. Neither is Rise. Mm -hmm. Well, it didn't take you long to get into trouble, did it? We ain't in trouble. Maybe you're not Rives, but Peavy here's just been shot. I told you we'd handle this, Marshal. Ain't nobody gonna sneak up on John Peavy and shoot him. I don't care if she is a woman. A woman? What woman? Oh, oh you always did talk too much, Peavy. You might as well tell him now. I ain't gonna tell him. I'll fix her myself. You'll tell me or I'll throw you in jail till you do. I don't have any women killed around here. Now, do you understand that? Hmm. Hey, go on, tell there it. There we go. You already started. Yeah. All right. See? She come up the alley, Marshal. <sighs> Next to our <sighs> And she shot right through the window. Ride senior running around the corner after. <sighs> I, I'm going to fix her good. Yeah, she's been threatening him, Marsha. I'm here to do it. Who is this woman? What's her name? Yeah, she's one of them, them gals that works at the Texas Trail, Marshal. Name of Kitty. Call well, it's uh, important, Kitty. Of course. What's the trouble, man? You know a man called John Peavy? Peavy? Yeah. Yeah, I know him, the old fool. Well, did you threaten to shoot him? 
Just keep going. Well, I right. told him I'd shoot him, and I will, too, if he doesn't leave me alone, the old goat. He's been shot, Kitty. Huh? He wasn't hurt very bad, but uh, he and his partner claim a woman did it. Now they say it was you. Do you think I did it, Mark? Well, Kitty, if you got mad enough and you had a gun in your hand, I'd be one of the first to hide. But uh, Can put her hands on the on somebody in cold blood. Uh, no, you didn't. When did it happen? Oh, an hour or two ago. I've been right here, alone. I guess I couldn't prove it. Well, you don't have to, Kitty. Thanks, Matt. Uh, the reason I came was uh, to tell you about it and see... Well, to see if you had any ideas. Well, all I know about Peavy and his friend Rives is that there are a couple of old men who've been acting like schoolboys. Oh. It's like they've run away and I haven't had a last fling. And I don't want anything to do with either one of them. Well, I don't blame you. But uh, Rives claims he saw a woman down the alley after the shooting. You, uh, any idea who it might have been? No. He's probably lying, dreaming. Yeah, maybe. Well, if, if you hear anything, let me know, Kitty. And uh, if PV gives you any more trouble, send for me. I sure will. <laughs> been up this early in the morning since I can remember, Mr. Dillon. Oh? Uh, how about last Sunday, Chester? Last Sunday? Yeah. Oh, well, that's different. That was still Saturday night, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, there comes Miss Kitty. What in the world is she doing up at this hour? Uh, she's in a hurry, whatever she's doing. Matt! Hello, Chester. Good morning, Miss Kitty. What's the trouble, Kitty? Matt, somebody tried to shoot me. What? In my room, just a while ago. I had a pillow down by my feet. I guess they thought my head was there. They put a bullet right through it. What, did you see anybody? No, it came from outside. I didn't dare look out right away. It, it, it's kind of the same as happened to Peavy, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, maybe it was Peavy. He threatened something like this. Oh, I'm scared, Matt. Well, you should be. Chester. Yes, sir? You stay with Kitty. Don't let her out of your sight. I'm going after Peavy and Rives. <laughs> Turn for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, every Tuesday, Pam and Jerry North prove that solving a murder is a family affair. And on the same evening, John Lund, as your truly Johnny Dollar, brings us the thrilling details of his latest insurance fraud investigation. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. This show how tall she is compared to him. He'd get a full body of that. By noon, I'd searched the whole town, and there was no sign of PV or his friend Rives. They disappeared. And until I found them, I didn't dare leave Kitty where they could get at her. So I had Chester drive her out to a friend's place a few miles from Dodge, and she was happy to go. Now, we didn't have any luck until the next afternoon. Bum-bum-bum. Cowboy happened to mention the chest that he'd just come across a couple of drunks camped about a mile from the Arkansas. So I decided it was worth riding out and taking a look. And it was. It's them, all right. Yeah, and they've seen us. Keep your head up now. You think they'll fight us? Ah, you never know. doing out here, Marshal? Looking for you. Well, you found it. Sit down and have a drink. Nope. Why are you calling me so early, too? It's so what weird. Else? What you got there? Corn liquor. Only about half a jug left, though. What's that other jug? 
We killed that yesterday. Here, have a swallow. Well, say, now, that's right kind of... Yes, sir. Uh, but, of course, I don't drink before sundown. Leastwise, not very often. Why'd you come out here, sir? If you don't want to drink. How long have you men been here? Day before yesterday. Feed his neck to the rather than him, and I figured a couple of days in camp like this might ease it off some. And I get to feeling better. I'm going back and teach that gal Kitty a lesson, though. I swear I am, Marshal. Somebody tried that this morning. Eh? What, mm-hmm. what do you mean? She got shot at, Peavy, the same way you did. That don't make no sense. Why, well, he's just thinking you done it, Peavy. How could I do her? I've been laying here drunk for two days. Anyway, uh, I wouldn't shoot no woman, Marshal. I had uh, beat him up a little, that's all. You know, knock him around. Well, what kind of men you think we are? I don't know. Why did you leave home in the first place? Yeah, home. <laughs> Man don't live forever, Marshal. You've got to enjoy yourself while you can. It rises. Rising. You tell him what you told me. About them graves. Well, I I was in the graveyard once, long time ago, and I noticed something I never forgot. No, sir. Never. Yeah. Tell him where I. Well, Marshal, I I looked around and I seen that there was as many graves shorter than me. As there was graves longer. And uh, that got him to thinking about dying, Marshal. So one day we decided to enjoy ourselves and quit working so hard. Hey, hey, hand me that jug, Rives. Yeah, help yourself. Uh, Hold it a minute, Peavy. Huh? I want to tell you something. What? I'm going to leave you here. But if I see you around Dodge, either one of you, I'll throw you in jail. What's this? We ain't done nothing. You have it in mind to beat up Kitty. But if you did that, I might kill you. So stay out of town. Come on, Chester. We left them there, passing the jug back and forth across their fire on the riverbank. Talking of death, probably, and of the hard, empty lives that they'd had. And the prairie often left men a little too hungry and a little too dry. Chester and I were talking about it when we spotted a woman up ahead. She was walking after a saddle horse, which we figured must have thrown her and got loose. She was an old woman and dressed for Sunday in a long black skirt and big hat with a fancy pin stuck through it. I sent Chester to catch the horse while I rode up to her and dismounted. My friend will bring your horse back, ma'am. Are you all right? I'm all right. Well, how'd he get loose? Name the critter, he ran off. Oh, I see. Uh, You live around here? No. You've been down by the river, ain't you? I just came from there. Why? See anybody? A couple of men lying around a fire, that's all. Drinking? Yeah. Yeah, they were drinking. Uh, You know them? I might. Are you looking for somebody? I might be. Well, uh, maybe you'd like us to ride back there with you. uh... I don't need nobody to ride nowhere with me, mister. What's your name, ma'am? What's my name? I don't take to scallywag cowboys asking me my name. Well, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. <sighs> you didn't? Well, no, ma'am. Of course I didn't. What's yours? Mm. Matt Dillon, ma'am. Dillon. I heard that name somewhere. Well, we won't be introduced proper unless... You tell me yours. 
My name's Sabina Peavy. Ms. Peavy? I've been married 35 years, Dylan. Here's Mr. Dillon. Seems gentle enough. Uh, I'll hold him while you get back on, man. I can manage. Hey, look what you've got tied to her saddle, Mr. Dillon. One of them old cavalry pistols. Yeah, grab it and put it in your belt, Chester. What? You heard me. Yes, sir. You put that back, you thief. What are you, anyway? Suppose you'll steal my horse next. I'm a U.S. Marshal, Miss Peavy. Everything's going to be all right. A marshal, eh? I uh, want you to come back to Dodge with me. Chester will bring your husband in. Is she Peavy's wife? You can't stop me, Marshal. Chester, hmm? go back to that camp and shoot a hole in their jug. And when they're sober enough, bring him to town. And don't say anything about Miss Peavy. Yes, sir, I'll do it. Now, you're going to be all right with me, ma'am. Well, you stole my gun and you're stronger than me. I guess I'll have to go. <laughs> Shall I make another pot of coffee for us, ma'am? No. No, thanks, Dylan. Oh. Well, they ought to be here pretty soon. It's nearly evening. If you'll tell that girl, Kitty, how sorry I am. I tried to shoot her, won't you? Well, I'm sure Kitty will understand. Imagine me being blind jealous after 35 years. You uh, told me you were out to kill your husband. Well, if, if that's true... Why would you be jealous? You can be jealous, even if you hate a man, Dylan. Do you hate Peavy? I didn't know how much I hated him till the day that old fool rides come by. The two of them rode off together. He come into the house and took the money and left, just like that. After 35 years. How, uh, how'd you know they'd come here? They was always talking about Dodge. They was always talking about laying on the bank of the Arkansas and drinking corn liquor, too. I knowed where they was. You're mighty dressed up for a woman riding out to shoot a man. Well, it came fitting somehow. Only good clothes I ever owned, Dylan. Wore them when I left home, St. Louis. Yeah. Well, well, I'm glad I ran into you, Miss Peavy, before it was too late. I'll talk to him. I told you I would. But I ain't never going back to him. He's had his fun. Maybe he'll settle down. Not with me, he won't. Dylan, I bore that man 13 children. 13? 11 of them died. And he beat me. Every time we lost one. Every time, Dylan. Oh, I see. Well, uh, where are the other two? He ran them off. Don't know where they are. Huh. Huh. Oh, oh here, here comes your husband. Like Chester's got him pretty sober. But I, I don't want to talk to him in here in front of everybody. Well, you, you could go out back there in one of the cells, if, if you don't mind. Well, what difference it make? My, my hat on straight, Dylan? Yeah. Yes, ma'am, you look fine, ma'am. I'll wait out back. Here they are, Mr. Dillon. Sober as deacon. What's this all about, Marshal? Uh, what do you want us to do? We ain't bothered nobody. Peavy, huh? you go out back through that door. There's somebody wants to see you. Who? Get moving. No, you stay here, Rives. Go on, Peavy. Uh, well, all right. Who's out there, Marshal? His wife. You mean... What will I do with that gun, Mr. Dillon? Uh, throw him in a drawer, Chester. Oh, okay, sir. Hey, what's the matter? Hey, 
was that? He's beaten her. Come on. Look at Peavy. She knocked him out. I think I killed him, Dylan. You killed him? He sure looks dead. She has stabbed him. I had to. He beat me for the last time. Said he was going to kill me. I put it right in his heart. Well, you old devil, I'll get you. No, you won't, I'll... Rives. Yes, I see Something. you, Big Bunny. Big Bunny given. Come into the office now. He, he was going to kill me, Dylan. I know he was. Well, I, I shouldn't have let him be alone with you. Well, you didn't know. What are you going to do with me now? You, uh, you mentioned St. Louis, Miss Peavy. Uh, yeah, you have any people there? My sister. She's all left. Huh. Well, how'd you like to see her? You ain't holding me? There was self-defense. Then I can go. I'll hold Rives here till you're out of town. Oh, but I... I can't get to St. Louis. Took all her money when he ran off. It's all spent. I know it. M Miss Phoebe, would you think I'm a scallywag cowboy if uh, I offered to stake you to St. Louis? Thanks, Dylan. Wait till I tell my sister about you. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Ralph Moody, and Helen Creed. Harley Bear is Chester, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. <laughs> Silver, star of the Broadway and film versions of Top Banana, visits Mike Wallace on Stage Struck tomorrow over most of these same stations. George Walt speaking. Stay tuned for Gangbusters, which follows in a few minutes over most of these same stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, the story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. I don't know what 
what got into the boy, Mr. Dillon. When I come for you, he was offering to shoot his initials into the mirror behind the bar. Is he drunk, Chester? Yes, sir. But mostly it seems like he just plain wants to howl. Well, he can howl all he likes as long as he keeps his gun quiet. Oh, there he goes. Yeah. I hope that's the mirror and not some man he's shooting at. Yeah, so do I. Old Doc would hate to lose that boy. All right, watch it now. Look, he's laying on the floor, Mr. Dillon. He's been killed. Look what he done to my mirror, Marshal. You shoot him, Sam? No, I hit him with a bunk stutter. He ain't dead. But I'm about to have to shoot his friend here. Go ahead and try it. Maybe I will. Easy, Sam. All right, what's your name, mister? My name's Blades. I work for Tom. You mean you work for his father, don't you? Well, sure, the old man owns the ranch, but... Me and Tom, we work together. Pick up his gun before he comes to, Chester. Yes, sir. All right, Blades. Tom's going to sleep it off in jail. You want to be locked up with him, or you're going to go home quietly? I ain't done nothing. It was that girl over there got him started. No, what girl? That one sitting at the table in the red dress. What, Kitty? Yeah, that's her name. Wait till old Dolph hears you threw his son in jail. I'll tell him myself, now, you get out of here. I'm going. He's at the Dodge house right now, Marshal. I'd like to hear you tell him. Can you get Tom over to the jail, Chester? Yes, sir, I sure can. All right, lock him up. I'll be back later. Oh. Yes, sir. All right, come on now, Tom. Oh, you ain't hurt that All right. All right. You gonna let Chester put him to bed, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> Sam knocked all the fight out of him, Kitty. I know. I saw it. Blade said that uh, you made him mad. That's one way of putting it. Oh, what do you mean? He made me mad. I don't like fresh kids, Matt. Why, Tom Vickers must be 20. Well, he's been acting like a kid. You know, Matt, he's changed lately. He used to be a gentleman like his father. I don't know what's come over him, but if he were mine, I wouldn't allow him off the ranch. Well, maybe you've just forgotten what it's like to be young, Kitty. I'm young enough to pour this glass of beer over your head. <laughs> you know what I mean. Sure. Well, that fellow Blades is older, though. Maybe he's responsible for Tom's jump in the fence. I don't like him at all. I'm sure he isn't a good influence on Tom. Yeah, Tom's too easily led. Yeah, he isn't the man his father is. He sure isn't. Anyways, he better leave me alone. Yeah. I'll tell him to. Well, i got to go see Dolph now. He isn't going to like your throwing his son in jail. Yeah, maybe not. But a stranger was shot and killed on his range yesterday. And I don't like that. Oh, I hadn't heard. Well, they haven't been talking much about it. Well, looks like you and Dolph are in for a pleasant little talk. <laughs> yeah. Well, so long, Kitty. Goodbye, Matt. <laughs> Marshal, come in. How are you, Doc? Fine, Marshal. I've been sitting here smoking a cigar before I went to bed. Have one? Uh, no, 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 thanks. Dolph, uh, I got some bad news for you. Tell me. Tom tried to shoot up the Texas Trail a while ago. Sam laid him out, and all right, now he's in jail. Anybody hurt? Oh, the boy's got a bump on his head, that's all. I don't like the idea of Vickers being in jail. I'm sorry, Dolph. How do I get him out? Well, I'll turn him loose in the morning. No Vickers is ever in jail before, Marshal. Well, it's not that important to me, Dolph. If you want him out now, you can come get him. No. no he's done wrong. He's got to pay for it. I thank you for coming to tell me, Marshal. Sure, Dolph, sure. But uh, there's something else I want to talk to you about. What's that? Well, I heard that a man was shot and killed on your range yesterday. It's true. Who did it? It was Russ 
Brooklyn Cattle Marshal. Yeah. Well, were you there? No, but I've been losing a lot of stock. Marshal. And fella Marshal. got my men and put up a fight. So there's one less thief around. You know who this man was? Never saw him before. But there's nothing wrong with shooting thieves, is there? Now, not if I try to shoot you first. I'm going to hire me some gunmen, Marshal. I'll show with them. No, that no, can't... that'll just cause trouble, Dolph. Gunmen will shoot anybody that happens along and then claim that they put up a fight. You know what they're like. Uh, then everybody better stay away. Everybody won't know about it, Dolph. You don't want innocent men killed, do you? Well, of course I don't. But I don't want my cattle stole either. Dolph, uh... You mind if I ride back out to your place with you tomorrow and have a look around? I got business in Dodge tomorrow, but I'm going out the day after. Be glad to have you. Oh, good. Well, I'll meet you here then. Okay, Marshal. Branding cattle up ahead, Dolph. That'll be Tom and Blades. They got a camp near here. I put Tom in charge of this whole section. They left Dodge yesterday morning early, Dolph. I know. I saw them leave. Oh, you did? They didn't see me. I was sitting across the street. Oh. Yeah, that's Tom, all right. Coming to meet us. He shouldn't stop work just because we ride by. We'll wait here. Who now? Who? Tom? Tom? What calves are those, Tom? Oh, it's a bunch of men gathered day before yesterday, sir. Where are the other men? How come just you and Blades are working them? Oh, we got all but about uh, 20 of them branded yesterday. I figured me and Blades could finish them alone. Two men ain't enough with a bunch like that. It'd have saved time if you'd kept more men to help. Well, let's ride over there. I want to look at them. Point. Maybe I better stay and help you. Oh, no, sir. We're doing fine. We'll be all through by evening. And your herd's getting scattered now. We'll handle them. Sure, don't you worry none, Mr. Vickers. I ain't worried none, Blades. Tom, next time you keep at least three more men with you when you got a bunch this size. No, okay, sir, I'll do it. In case you're wondering about the marshal here in Chester... They're going to look things over for a day or so. The marshal thinks maybe he can cut the trail of them cattle thieves. I sure hope so. We ain't had much luck, except for that one. Now, go on back to work. I'll ride out here next week sometime. All right. Uh, get that iron ready for another one, Blaze. It's red hot now. Come on, Marshal. I'm late enough. <laughs> Even Mr. Dillon ain't it. Don't you think so? What? Oh, I was just wondering what kind <sighs> of evening it is in the dark. <sighs> oh, if there was any real trouble, somebody would have rode out and told you. Yeah, I suppose so. It's been two days now. Oh, we better get back tomorrow. That'll suit me fine. I swear we've rode a thousand miles over this ranch. And all for nothing, as far as I can tell. Yeah, maybe. Why don't you come set in the porch, you two? Oh, we're just walking our supper off a little bit, Doc. Yeah, I've been in the saddle so much the last few days, I need to stand. <laughs> Suit yourselves. Uh, Doc, from what the men tell me, you've lost only about a hundred head of calves altogether. I had the impression that it was a lot more than that. I won't put up with one calf being stolen from me, Marshal. I'm an honest man, and I work hard. And if a neighbor or a stranger needs help, I'll give it to him gladly. But I'll 
kill the man that steals. Well, I wish you'd do one thing for me. <sighs> What's that? The next time you lose the <sighs> stock, send word to me before you turn this outfit into one arm camp. Well, Marshal, if it was anybody else, I'd tell him to mind his own business. But, uh, I'll do it. Thank you, Dalton. Oh, by the way, uh, we're going to be riding back to Dodge tomorrow. All right. But I won't give you more in a couple of days next time. <laughs> well, that's better than nothing. Mr. Dillon, we won't never get to Dodge if we stop and tally ever heard of cows we come across. Now, this is the bunch I wanted to see, Chester. We'll travel as the crow flies from here in. Come on. Why was you so interested in that herd? We must have rode through it ten times. I was sort of interested in proving something to myself, Chester. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, oh yawning little bunny. Oh. Just Couple a dogs, cute man. little can, bunny uh, being too cute. I okay. love Sims. It's Tom and that fellow Blades. Yeah. Where's my old man, Marshal? We left him at the ranch, Tom. We're going back to Dodge. Empty handed, huh? Not quite. What do you mean, not quite? Oh, Blades will tell you. I just looked over that bunch of stock back there. Just get an sure. entrance face. Just being like, uh, hey, do a you need to stop, stop being so down. Stop being you so down. Us, just Be get them branded, Tom. All of them. Of course we'll get them branded. Say that you do. Come on, Chester. Yes, sir. I'm just not putting on her the spikes on the side of her face because it's it's. I don't it's just what you were at, Mr. Dillon. I'm glad I was productive today. You know what? I'm glad I was productive. What do you mean? Tom Vickers and his friend Blades are thieves, Chester. And probably murderers to boot. Turn for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, today, good engineers are needed in hundreds of varied fields. You can build a fine career as a trained engineer and at the same time help maintain America's scientific and engineering superiority. For information, write Box 40, Midtown Station, New York, 18, New York. That's Box 40, Midtown Station, New York, 18, New York. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. I'll probably be streaming tonight. No, my ass. Oh, Chester, there you are, my boy. Where's Matt? Oh, he'll be back in a minute, Doc. Sit down. Oh, don't mind, do. Say, he told me about Dolph Vickers' son last night. You know, the only thing I can't figure, Doc, is why he don't tell Dolph. Oh, he's got his reasons, I expect. I didn't come here to gossip. Have you ever had supper yet? Yeah, I had early tonight. But Mr. Dillon probably go with you. Good yeah. evening, Doc. Ah, you look hungry. You look worried. And Dolph Vickers, boy? Yeah. Now, sooner or later, I'm going to have to arrest him, Doc. I've been trying to figure some way to do it without breaking the old man's heart. Well, I don't suppose there is any other way, Matthew. Well, if there is, I haven't thought of it. <laughs> Somebody out back, Mr. Dillon. No, stay where you are, Chester. I'll see who it is. I'll be right with you, Doc. Sure. Sure, Matt. You're going to starve to death waiting for somebody to eat with around here, Doc. Oh, why, fasting's good for Manchester. <laughs> and a little of it wouldn't hurt you. 
Oh. Seems to me I spent my entire youth fasting, Doc. I won't never make up for it. Uh oh, oh, what? What's that? I don't know, but I better go see. They're not that big of a difference. They're like a foot away from each other. I shouldn't. I make him so Did small compared to her. Just like, bam. Somebody cooting at you? No, um, I'm not answering. No, I'm not answering. I got ten more minutes. Give me ten okay, more no. minutes. Then That's I'm going to eat something. Whether you nice. like it or yeah. not. After they knocked on the door, they ran up behind that far shed there. Plenty for shooting. Well, ain't we going after them? Now, they had horses hidden there. I heard them ride off. Well, I'll go buy a couple from the rail. No. Huh? No, let them go, sir. Yeah, but Mr. Dillon, they tried to ambush you. I know, but I'd prefer not to shoot them. Especially Tom Vickers. Tom? We'll ride out to the ranch tomorrow, Chester. Maybe we can bring them in without a fight. Anyway, it's worth a try. For Dolph's sake. They're like a foot apart. So, like, if she stood... Give me ten more minutes, Anybody Mom. Home? Jesus Christ. And you're not going to take up all my time while I eat Here before I go to work. Home. That's for damn sure. Uh, hello, Marshal. Hello, She'll drive. Hello, she she will drive, Thank that's you. for sure. Where are you going, Tom? Ain't you going to say hello? I got work. What kind of manners is that? There's no use running away, Tom. You wouldn't get far. What? Now, come on back and sit down, huh? You do a lot of ordering around, don't you, Marshal? Sometimes I do. What's the matter between you, anyway? Be better if you told him, Tom. I don't know what you're talking about. All right. What are you playing those with? calves the other day. What Why are you playing? Uh, did you, Tom? Of course we did. That kind of stuff, Mr. Barr. And us? then everybody just gives. I ain't riding nowhere. I ride enough of this. You tell me what you're talking about, Tom. Maybe you better tell me, Marshal. Hello, Dolph. You remember the herd Tom and Blades were working the day we rode out here with you? Of course I do. Well, I saw that same herd on the way back mm. to Dodge. Uh, Still about 20 unbranded calves in it. Say it out, Marshal. I ran into Tom and Blades just beyond, and I told them to be sure and brand those calves. Go on. So they knew I was on to them. On to what? Dolph, I'm willing to bet everything I got that if we find that herd, those calves are either still unbranded or missing. What makes you so sure? Tom refuses to ride out there with us. I do. What you're saying is mighty serious, Marshal. I hope you won't regret it. Little bunny. Yeah, Come on, Tom. Scratch we'll go see them calves. You know. Like, I'm a little bunny. We're yeah, going out there, bunny. I said. I ain't going. Start right, I am. You'll do what I tell you. Not this time. We're going if I have to knock you down and tie you onto your horse. And you know I'll do it. Yeah, you would. Them calves ain't there. And where are they? <sighs> Twenty calves ain't hard to track, Tom. Blades got them. Got them where? Up by Little Spring. You don't have to say it. I know Little Spring ain't on this ranch. Go on. And there are three other men up there. You don't know them. They're holding over a hundred head by now. Come on. You gonna charge your own son for stealing from you? Are you? Tom, you and Blades killed that stranger to help you cover up all this, didn't you? It's too bad we didn't kill you, Marshal. What's that? They tried to ambush me in Dodge last night, Tom. My own son... A murderer and a thief. Tom.
Tom, come into the other room with me. You'll excuse us, gentlemen. He's going to help him get away, Mr. Dillon. Not if I know Doc, he isn't. I expect he just wants to talk to him alone before we take him to jail. Mm. Yes, sir. You know, I feel a whole lot sorrier for Dolph than I do for the boy. I guess you should. Mr. Dillon. Uh, it's all right, Marshal. Where's Tom? I killed him. Here's my gun, Marshal. I'm sorry you did it, Doc. I had to. Marshal, I'd like to bury him now. Uh, we'll help you. No. Nope. I'll bury my own dead. Then I'll ride into jail with you. All right. You'll get my calves back? I'll pick up a posse when we get to Dodge. The boy was my responsibility, Marshal. You understand that. What you did was wrong, Dolph. You can wait here in the cool of the house. I'll be back. We'll wait. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Paul Dubov, Charles A. Baston, and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Tomorrow, don't miss The High Mountain, a hard-hitting documentary report on the progress and problems of 15 million Negro Americans. Tomorrow in the daytime on most of these same stations. Stay tuned now for Gangbusters, which follows in a few minutes over most of these same stations. George Walsh speaking. Saturday night, Herb Schreiner shells out on Two for the Money over the CBS radio network. City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Yes, sir. What about her? She's standing out there in the street. 
Looks like he's about to head down Santa Fe Trail with a big load of supplies. Well? Well, I, I'm just wondering what a nice this hair girl like Mavis McLeod can is just ridiculous. With a man like that. You, uh, jealous, Tessus? Oh, no, sir. But Tiller's such a mean, ugly old bull. Oh, well, look at him. Look at that. What? Well, he just hit her, Mr. Dillon. What? Slapped her right in the face. He did. I told you he was mean. Well, that's a fine way to tell a girl goodbye. Yeah. Look, he hit her again. Yeah. Oh, I hate a man that picks on women, Mr. Dillon. Oh, poor little thing. She's crying. I sure am glad we're doing something about this. If I hear anything about you when I get back, Mavis, I'll really whip you. Do you understand? No. Don't do it. Don't do it. That's enough, Teller. What are you butting in for, Marshal? Let go of her. This ain't no business of yours. I said let go of her. Okay. I ain't hurting her none. Am I, Mavis? Am I? You see? You got no right to mix in people's private business, Marshal. This your wagon and mule, Stiller? Of course it is. Then get going. Right now. I'm going, but if I wasn't in a hurry, I'd have this out with you right here. I'll see you when I get back next week, Marshal. Well, Mavis, you remember what I told you now. Well, do you? Yes. What's going on here, anyway? Mavis, has this beast been after you again? Don't you call me names, Kitty. I'll fix you same as her. I can't tell you from one of your mules, Tiller. Now, look at him. Leave him alone, Kitty. You get up on that wagon box, tell her. Now. You wait till I get back. Buckwheat! Oh my god, Buckwheat, how you been? How have you been, Buckwheat? It's so good to have you around. I hope he never comes back. You come with me, honey. Thanks, Kitty. I'll make you some coffee. That is the question, uh, Bug Queen. I do have to ask. Is there more Bug Queens? Are there way more Bug Queens than I would expect? Because it's Bug Queen 1, 2, 3, 4. It's not Bug Queen, you know, as is. That's just my question. It's like, is there is there a lot? Is there a thousand two hundred and thirty four bug queen? <laughs> That's a bad joke. Don't answer. It's a horrible joke. Don't answer. That man should be horsewhipped. He sure should. Such a pretty girl. Thanks, and I'm okay. I've been sick for a while. Ugh. Ugh. Well, Marshal, I don't want to take up your time. I thought it was the end of the day. There's so many bugs and so many queens of bugs. I arrived this morning. I'm from Philadelphia, Marshal, and I'm a gambler. Uh huh. They gamble much in Philadelphia. You know, with the amount of queens, I mean, it makes sense. I suppose. Well, you can gamble. I made all the counts, uh, and yeah, no, no, no. It's okay. No, no, no. I get the joke. I get the joke now. No, that's actually a, a perfect fucking joke. Because there's so many gosh darn bug queens in nature. Ant queens, uh, you know, bees. No! The passwords. I haven't lost my passwords yet. I just, what is it you want to tell me, Mr. France? I have a few passwords, well, a and sometimes I do I get a bit screwy the with them. I when I'm like, which password did I make it here? Did I make it this one? Did I make so it that one? Mm. Your honor. Just get you into trouble. Oh, also I gotta get my, uh, my cell phone verification. It's also something I don't appreciate, is cell phone uh, identification. 
Cause what if I lose my phone? Or what if I change my number and shit like that? That's all. That may sound Don't I need to have my cell phone to begin with to change my cell phone number? Now you may send a man to watch the deal if you like. That's Mr. Proudfoot here. Better not change your cell phone anytime soon. You run your game, Mr. France. If it's crooked, I'll find out soon enough. All right. But, uh, don't get the idea but no, that's actually a great fucking joke. No I love that joke. Uh, one, two, three, four is actually a great joke. If it is self-defense, but you take to killing people even in self-defense, and I'll have to run you out of town. But I only know one. I only know one bug queen, and it's you. She's a bit drunk. She's a bit drunk. Of course. So I might make her uh might make her body a little bit more exaggerated while she's walking. Well you look peaking. I've had a long journey, sir. Well now, when you get rested up, you come And she is taller than the male care than the male uh main lead as well. So I she's taller than Trent, and it shows. She is a big gal. I need to finish my laundry, but hope you have a good rest of your stream. Thank you, Bug Queen. You're amazing, Bug Queen. Never stop being awesome and never stop being you. I'm actually about to end stream in just a little bit, but I was just glad to see somebody and glad to see you. I know it's been a while. I hope you feel better. Really, I do. And I hope next time you get to hang out a little bit longer. Once you got married, Doc, and then you could eat fine. Oh, oh, the last woman that wanted to marry me was a hog and harmony cook. <laughs> I don't think she ever heard of any other kind of food. Why didn't you ever take her out? Oh, hmm. take her. Oh, man. That was in Arkansas. <laughs> she didn't even wear shoes. You old liar. No, 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 no. I swear. <laughs> her pappy had a saying that every woman's entitled to a baby and a bonnet. The shoes were never mentioned in that house. <laughs> you must have made a handsome couple. Oh, well, of course. I was somewhat younger then. <laughs> a lot younger, I hope. I was, I was. <laughs> Good thing, too. They lived in a place called uh, Rip Shin Thicket. <laughs> Rip Shin Thicket. The court in that girl was a day's work, man, believe me. <clears throat> Doc, why don't you finish your supper? I'm not even listening to you. Oh, and she had a brother called Spotted Jack, and he claimed he never slept in the bed his whole life. <laughs> Or took a bath. There must be something else we can talk about, Doc. Oh, man, well, anything at all, anything at all. Well, what are you going to do about that gambler, that Marcus France, for example? Well, I don't know yet, Doc. Well, he's been here for a week and he's already killed a man. That was self-defense, all right. But if it happens again, he's through. You think he's dealing honest, Matt? Uh, so far, he is. Uh, hello, oh. Mr. Dillon. Doc? Well, Chester. Chester. Uh, I've been over at the Texas Trail. Miss Kitty asked me to find you. Huh? Trouble? I don't know. But she said it was really important. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, Doc, uh, you didn't tell me that Arkansas girl's name. Oh, well, it's a funny thing, Matt. Uh, well, she never told me. Marcus France over there. Oh? Uh -huh. He's going to be killed, Matt. What? Tiller Evans is due back tomorrow. Well, what's Tiller got to do with it? You remember the day he left when you stopped him from slapping Mavis around? Mavis? You mean Mavis and France? Are... She says she's in love with him, Matt, and she doesn't care who knows it. Underneath, she's scared to death. Uh -huh. 
Well, does France know about Tiller? Oh, Mavis told him. Matt, I don't know what you think about him, but to me, he's the most decent man I've met in a long time. Well, he may be, Kitty. But he's sure causing a lot of trouble. Well, Tiller's going to kill him. I know he is. You got to stop it, Matt. Kitty, how did a nice girl like Mavis get started with Tiller in the first place? Oh, she didn't have much choice. The big ape just moved in on her and took over. She's awful young, Matt. Pretty helpless. Well, if she and France is so much in love, why don't they get married? <laughs> I've thought of that, too. So has Mavis, by the way. Uh, well, maybe France isn't so honorable after all, Kitty. Ah, uh, give him time, Matt. Tomorrow isn't very far off. Before I said you're cheating, and I meant it. No man can call me a cheat. I just did, didn't I? Stay here, Kitty. Yeah. You better leave the game, mister. You're cheating, you're dealing crooked cards. You've got a gun, mister. Now use it. Leave that gun where it is. Now, France, I warned you once. You heard what he said, Marshal. I meant it, too. He's dealing crooked cards. Can you prove it, mister? I don't have to prove it. He's got over $100 of mine. I ain't want a hand at this table in an hour. See, Marshal? Just like I told you, some men can't take losing. Did you see him cheating, mister? I didn't have to. Look at that pile of money. You talk pretty loose for a man that doesn't have any more to go on than that. Now, why don't you forget about it and get out of here? Forget about it? You heard me. This game is closed for the rest of the night. Just as you say, Marshal. Gentlemen, the game is closed. I'll see you later. Oh, France. You know, egging men into a draw and then calling it self-defense is going to make your stay in Dodge mighty brief. I'll have to chance that, Marshal. How many men have you killed because of that tender pride of yours, huh? Well, it doesn't matter. But there's something I would like to know. What are you going to do about Tiller Evans? Oh, you heard... First time in my life, Marshal. I love a woman. Then why don't you get her out of here while there's still time? Run away from a fight? Till there's a pretty tough man. You mean he might kill me? And where would that leave Mavis? Sorry, Marshal. I've got to stay. You know, France, I can't figure you at all. There's something wrong with you, and I don't know what it is. You'll find out, Marshal. Soon enough. We will return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first... Tomorrow afternoon on Stage Struck, Mike Wallace and CBS Radio cover the opening of the new Broadway musical, The Girl in Pink Tights. Its star, Jean Mayer, Charles Goldner, and others in the cast will be heard. Stage Struck on most of these same stations tomorrow afternoon, opening The Girl in Pink Tights, a promising newcomer full of Sigmund Romberg's music. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. now, Mr. Dillon. Oh, what won't be long, Chester? Cowboy just told me he passed Tiller Evans a couple miles down the trail. He'll be driving into town directly. Oh. Chester. Hmm? What do you think of Marcus France? Him? Well, sir, for a fact, I'm dubitated. What? Well, he seems like such a nice fellow, but he just won't do what he plain order. Like? Get married with Mavis McLeod like she wants him to. That'd stop old Tiller. Uh, maybe. Well, the very least he could do is run off with her. Mr. Dillon, I just hate to think what'll become of that little girl if Tiller gets it. 
Well, one way or another, Chester, there's about to be a killing. And I gotta try to stop it. How are you gonna do it? Well, there's a stage north in half an hour. Yeah, but Mr. France won't go. Chester, hmm? you know where Mavis lives, don't you? Yes, sir. All right, go get her. I'll put her on the stage. I'll meet you there. Okay, Mr. Dillon. Now, you're gonna have to hurry. Please come in. Thank you. I am honored, sir. Would you care for a glass of whiskey? Uh, no. No, thank you. The very best money can buy. France. Hmm? Tiller Evans will be here shortly. He'll be looking for me, Marshal, not I for him. Well, anyway, it happens there'll be a killing. One sinner less in the world. I'm a lawman, France, not a preacher. Yes, of course. Now, Marshal, I have no quarrel with this man, Tiller. Why don't you talk to him? Well, he's not the kind of a man you can talk to. Well, then put him in jail for disturbing the peace or something. It'll be too late by the time the peace is disturbed. France, there's a stage leaving Dodge in a few minutes. Is there, Marshal? Mavis is going to be on it. What? Now, if you're the gentleman you say you are, you'll be on it with her. You're making a mistake, Marshal. Well, I've made mistakes before. No use arguing with you, is there? Well, if you told me what's holding you back, there might be. Shall we say I never run from a fight? I don't question that. But this time it's different. I don't believe that's your reason. You say goodbye to Mavis for me, Marshal? No. I've uh, just decided you're going with her. I'm sorry. I'm not. Careful, Marshal. I'm always careful. No, no. <laughs> She's inside the coach. I'm keeping an eye on her. All right, open the door, Chester. France is going with her. Yes, sir. Marcus. Uh, Marcus, what happened? He isn't hurt, Mavis. But he'll be out for a while yet. Why are you doing this, Marshal? Well, I'm a gambler, too, Mavis. And I'm taking a chance that man here of yours is what he says he is. He's a fine man. Well, goodbye, Mavis. And good luck. All right, driver. Yeah. Get this stage out of here. Sure, Marshal. Hold on there. What? Get going, driver. Hold Go on. on. Come back here. Stop that stage. It's too late, Tiller. You, you done this, Marshal. Now take it easy. That tin horn. Run off with my gal. And you helped him. She wanted to go. Nobody steals nothing from Tiller Evans. I'll find him and I'll kill him. Both of them. No, you won't. Oh, I've got to kill you first, eh? Why don't you go get drunk and forget about it, Tiller? You helped him. Don't do it. I'll do it. Chester? Yes, sir? Take care of this, will you? Yes, sir. A couple of you fellows, give me a hand here. We'll drag him over at that trough. Be on, you and Cook. Matt? Yeah. Is Tiller a 
head hurt? Now you'll be all right, Doc. Outside of being a little lonely. Mavis is going to be a little lonely, too. What? Marcus France. He did come to my office, Matt. What are you talking about, Doc? His lungs. That's why he came west. I wouldn't give him over a couple of months at the most. Uh, Mavis just isn't very lucky, is she, Doc? No. No, she isn't, but... Thanks to you, at least they'll have what time there is. He wouldn't have left with her any other way. Yeah. All right, everybody. It's about to be that time again. I don't know who we're going to raid, but we're going to raid somebody. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for staying in. Thank you for being awesome. Thank you for being great, you know. Alex Zander will be fine. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman McDonald, stars Let's William see. Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Alexander Tonight's would be a good, good one, so, you know. With music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Eleanor Cannon, John Daner, and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Let Armed Forces say. Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. It's been quite a quiet stream, but that's okay, doesn't it? It doesn't have to be big, it doesn't have to be... CBS Radio suspense Sometimes stars it just Ronald has Reagan. to be a nice the drama dream. is an unusual one titled Circumstantial Terror. In it, a man is on trial for a killing he didn't commit, and the guilty man is on the jury. Tension mounts and mounts until the suspense is almost beyond belief. Don't miss suspense Monday night over most of these same stations. Yeah. George Walsh speaking. Let's give Alexander Stay some now love. For give him, which follows in a few minutes over most give him a high stations. five and all that. For more and thank drama, you for coming in, and Lux thank Radio you for being Theater. awesome. I Monday do appreciate it. Do hope Radio you guys Network. enjoyed yourselves, even if, you know, it's just for a little bit. So I'll see you guys later, and I hope you have a wonderful one now. And stay awesome, stay positive, and know you're incredible. So I will see you guys later. Bye-bye. Dodge City and in the Territory on yeah. West, there's just one way.